Hey guys, welcome back to Reserved Investments on YouTube. So in this video, I got a lot of new subscribers and even some older subscribers reaching out asking me, Sean, what books do you recommend I read or what authors should I read to help me become a better collector, speculator, or investor? Because I don't want to end up becoming a Timmy, especially as I age decade after decade. I don't want a house filled with junk that makes it look like I'm living in a hoarder situation. So can you help me on this quest? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. And if that's something that you've been wanting to know, this video is for you. So I want to issue a full disclaimer before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video. Some of these books that I am going to be recommending in this video were already recommended previously. I just want to be sure that everybody out there is aware of them because they are excellent books on the antiques and collectibles trade. Now, another disclaimer, in this particular video, we are solely focusing on books about antiques and collectibles. I am gonna be doing another video fairly soon where I dive headfirst in the books about finance and economics that you guys should also be reading if you are trying to either get established as an overall investor, meaning getting your own financial life in order, or if you're somebody that wants to apply those teachings of economics and finance to the antiques and collectibles trade overall. I also want to state, and this is a shameless plug, I do write for Antiques and Auction News. So if there's anybody out there that's watching this video and you don't know who I am, well, gee, that dude, Reserved Investments, looks like Sean Cermak, who writes for Antiques and Auction News. That's probably why, because we are one and the same. I would like to pretend that that's my clone or I'm his clone maybe, but really that excuse isn't working anymore and it's getting kind of old and stale and a lot of people are accusing me of being sucked into some dimensional science fiction portal every time I use that excuse. So we're not going to go in that direction. So just know that if you do want to learn economics and finance, there are certain authors out there in the antiques and collectibles trade, and I am one of them who can guide you on your quest so that you can become a better collector, speculator, and or investor. I also do want to apologize, guys, before I go any further. There is some work being done outside of my house. As a result, you may hear some hammering or some noise in the background. I really can't control that. But anyway, just wanted to put that out there so I don't get comment after comment. Sean, what was that noise in the background? Or who's hammering? What's going on? That's why. So, we're going to get right into the meat and potatoes of this video. The first book and the first author I'm going to recommend, and this is a review for some of you, is Harry Rinker. You can check out the articles that he writes at www.harryrinker.com. He is one of the foremost experts in the antiques and collectibles trade. He's very knowledgeable. He has helped me over the years. He has helped other people I know over the years. A lot of younger people, unfortunately, don't like him because he says the truth, much like I do on this channel, about how a lot of speculation in pop culture-based collectibles is not going to end well for most participants over the long term. And a lot of the Timmies out there, they can't handle when people like me, when people like Harry Rinker speak our mind and are actually honest when we talk about pop culture collectibles and long-term investing in antiques and collectibles. So... The book that he wrote, where if you watch this channel for any length of time, you already know this book. It's called How to Make the Most of Your Investments in Antiques and Collectibles. The first insider's guide to manipulating the antiques and collectibles market to maximize your investment. Now, to be fair, for all my new subscribers out there, this book was written in pre-internet times. Literally, I was like 12 when this book came out. I'm now going to be 44 years of age. Yes, it is that old. So just understand that if you're going to go and try to get a copy of this book, it does kind of read like stereo instructions. And that's no offense to Mr. Rinker. I want to make that very clear. The book is brilliantly written. It has a lot of strategies that you can use. If you do want to attempt to manipulate the trade, just understand it is not up to date in regards to how this views the modern era post-internet age that we all find ourselves living in. So if you are going to get this book, I highly recommend that you at least read it once. Just know that's the only flaw that I see in a lot of people out there that are clamoring to get a copy of this particular book. Next on my list 
is probably one of my favorite books that were ever written on the antiques and collectibles trade. This is by Maureen Stanton, and the book is called Killer Stuff and Tons of Money. This is a must-read book, regardless of your knowledge of the antiques and collectibles trade. Whether you're a beginner, whether you're an expert, whether you're someone in the middle, even if you're somebody out there that buys $5 million, $10 million paintings, you can get something out of this book. Now, the one caveat with this book, and I got to state it, before you head off to Amazon and buy this book, understand that it was written at the beginning of the financial crisis back in 2008, 2009. So this book paints an unrealistic picture that the whole antiques and collectibles trade is dying because at that particular time, there was a lot of uncertainty in the market, especially in the financial markets, and also, of course, in the antiques and collectibles trade. So if you do get a copy of this book, take the market reports that are written in this book for some of the top dealers with a grain of salt. Um, there is a lot of great information in this book. They talk about antiques. They talk about collectibles. They interview a lot of pop culture collectors in this book. So you will get something out of this book, regardless of what side of the spectrum you're on. Whether you like antiques, whether you like art, whether you like collectibles, whether you like antiquities, it is covered in this book. Trust me. Next book I want to talk about, and these two are new. I have never mentioned these before. So this is all new material. The first book is called The Business of Antiques. How to Succeed in the Antiques World. This book is by Wayne Jordan. Now, if you don't know the name Wayne Jordan, I'm going to forgive you. He's almost like a Harry Rinker type expert, but he's more on the antique side of the equation. He writes for Antique Trader. So if you ever want to read his articles, just Google search Wayne Jordan and then add antiques behind it and a lot of his articles will come up. Well, he also wrote this excellent book called The Business of Antiques, How to Succeed in the Antiques World. And you can get this literally for under 15 bucks on Amazon and it is an excellent book. Now, I already know what you're going to ask. Sean, I'm in the collectibles trade. I don't want to read a book about Tiffany glass or antique marbles or brown furniture or anything like that. And again, I'm going to come back and I'm going to state to you the principles that are taught in the antiques trade can also apply to the collectibles trade. So a lot of you guys, you're getting all your information from hype driven YouTubers, people who hold up a copy of Amazing Spider-Man 129 and CGC 8.0 and tell you it's going to be the next big thing and it's an investment grade item. And you should put all your little lunch money into a book like that. Or if you flip through YouTube, you get the wonderful people that try to tell you that, Sean, 1990s comic books are coming back big. I should be going out there and hoarding all these overproduced 1990s comic books because all these other YouTubers out there that have hundreds of thousands of subscribers are telling me the market's going to soar in the next 10 years. Well, little Timmy, I'm here to tell you those are hype-driven channels. On reserved investments, we don't have any hype. There's no hype on this particular channel. I give you the facts as to how the antiques and collectibles trade operates from the inside. If you don't like my information, it's simple. Take the blue pill, unsubscribe, and go join a hype-driven channel and allow them to give you all the information that you think you're going to benefit from. I assure you, 10 to 20 years, you're most likely going to be sorely disappointed. Now, if those three books aren't enough to whet your appetite, there's more. There's a person by the name of Joe Willard who wrote the book called The Picker's Bible. Now, to be fair, there's two versions of this book. This is the first edition. I also have the second edition somewhere on my bookshelf up there. I'm too lazy to get up and show it to you. I would advise you to get the second edition. It is called The Picker's Bible, How to Pick Antiques Like the Pros. This is another book you can get from Amazon for probably less than 15 bucks. It is well worth reading. To be fair, once again, this book straddles the line between the antiques and collectibles trade. This book also talks a little bit more about picking in the olden days, pre-internet era. But there are strategies to help you maximize profits if you are on eBay, auction sites, 
collecting forums, Facebook groups, and the like. So again, this is an excellent book worth reading. So let's do a quick review. The four books and authors that I recommend that you read on a regular basis. Number one, Harry Rinker. He, can, he has a website. It's www.harryrinker.com. You can read all of his articles for free, guys. You just click recent articles and all of his recent articles will come up and you guys can get yourself a free education. The next book that I recommend or author, I should say, that you should read is Wayne Jordan. This guy writes for Antique Trader. He is an awesome expert in the trade. He gives excellent advice. He does talk about speculation. He talks about the antique side of the business and even on certain instances, the collectible side of the trade. The next book is Killer Stuff and Tons of Money. This book must be read by any serious collector, speculator, or investor. This is written by Maureen Stanton. Maureen Stanton, prior to this book, had no knowledge of the antiques and collectibles trade. She actually did this while researching the market with a dealer who is talked about in this book by the name of Kurt Avery, who actually goes by an alias, so he can take you inside the antiques and collectibles trade. Buy this book. Read this book. Learn from this book. The last and final book that I recommend is The Picker's Bible. Again, this is by Joe Willard. Try to get the second edition. I'm too lazy to get up and pull the second edition off the shelf to show you guys. This is the first edition. Again, I recommend that you get the second edition. I hope all this information helps you. All is what I am doing on this channel is trying to make you become a better investor, collector, speculator, a better person at your life, guys. That's really what this is about. Economics and finance is the center of your universe. If you understand the core concepts of economics, finance, whether you're involved in the collectibles trade, whether you're a minimalist, it doesn't matter. It all comes back to economics and finance. You must have an understanding of economics and finance before you become successful at anything. It doesn't matter if you're a celebrity out there that earns $10 million a year. If you don't understand economics and finance, that $10 million is going to be spent like that and you're going to end up going into debt and you're going to have more problems than you knew what to do with. Money is never the answer. Money is something that comes from understanding economics, finance, the way the world works, and understanding your own strengths and weaknesses. We all have strengths and weaknesses. I talk about this constantly on this channel. If you're somebody who's addicted to shopping and you're also a collector, guess what? You're going to have a problem building a net worth. If you're somebody who reads the wrong information and tries to apply it to your own life without becoming financially established, you're going to have a problem. If you're somebody out there who is attracted, whether you're male or female, to somebody in the dating world who is bad for you, who is a toxic person, you're going to have problems. It all comes back to knowledge, understanding yourself, and having a good sphere of influence to learn from. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.